Happy Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Here, we've not done a podcast in ages. Hi, man, it's been at least hours. <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> Actually, loving doing so many podcasts. It's a lot of work on the behind the scenes, but very rewarding, and, and I love it. Tonight, we go back to 1982, and we check out this absolute mad film. <laughs> Basket case. <laughs> Even that art right. makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, for me, it's just. I mean, I, I'll, I'll get into it. I will. I will. That that's why I expect to see when I look in the toilet after a banging shit, and it just never comes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that shit happens. <laughs> but, um, before, before we talk about it, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you find folks watching at home see exactly what we're on about. So here's the trailer for Basket Case. <laughs> What is the secret Dwayne is hiding in the basket? What's in the basket? Some of the tenants claim to have heard noises coming from this room. Like someone on a rampage. What's in the basket? You're that kid Needleman warned me about, the Bradley boy, the freak we separated. Ah! I know an awful lot of guys, Dwayne, but you're different. Ah! What's in the basket? Ah. What's in the basket? <laughs> What's in the basket? My brother. Your brother! <laughs> Open it, if you dare. Basket case. <laughs> Mate, I don't know about you, but that was screeching in my ears every time somebody screamed. It was like... <laughs> it's like over-the-top 80s screaming. Everything it was really, it, it was amazing. really nice of your microphone to clip you there, so that Did I it? couldn't hear you screaming in my ear. <laughs> Did I actually, I heard you starting it, and then it just went quiet. So that was Did probably be, probably good for me and anybody else that oh. might happen to be listening with headphones. Mm. I'm curious if that if that was just you or if it was everybody at home. I suppose I'll find out in the archives. Eh? In the archives. Um, and so tonight's not a short film. It's not a short film. It's actually a, a nice hour-long episode of a basket case review. For me, oh man! So this this is a, a another another upscale from Arrow. They are releasing this absolute beauty. I mean, look at that! Look at that man, an absolute oh, beauty. Dabby. Even the artwork. Look, see, you can me. I'll have a slip-off case. 4K Ultra HD. <laughs> right? Me. Is he getting the middle finger? It is. Uh, it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this will be available <laughs> on the 29th of April, 2024. It is jam-packed with absolute bangers of special edition, uh, special features. It's, a, of, of course, 4K restoration on the original 60mm negative. That was hard to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I- <laughs> It has the high definition 1080p presentation, original uncompressed PCM mono audio, the optional English subtitles, audio commentary with director Frank Hennel and Lauter, and a star, banger. <laughs> Kevin Van Henten. Rank. They, they give us those titles, right? <laughs> you fuck with me, right? They're like, lads, watch us. I, I, th- I think they've just seen you try to pronounce normal words and went, let's give them these. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that's just some of the bonus features. There's a list as long as me with these bonus features. And that's something when you're buying something that, that has already been out since the 80s, what you want is a representation. You want the 4K and you want all those, because I'm the guy that goes through all those special edition. Like, I go through the special features. Uh, mm-hmm. that's aimed at somebody like me. Matthew Men in the house says, Evening gents, cracking wee movie. Into it, into it. So that was the first viewing for me. I don't know, is this your first time ever watching it, J Mac? Yeah, yep. I mean I, I knew of it. It's obviously it's got a massive kind of cult following um for major fans of the genre, but it's it's one that I've never actually watched before. Um so it was very kind of the guys at Arrow to send us a lovely wee screener of this one. 
Um, but I, <laughs> it was it was an experience. You know, like that is up my street. That's it's very Rocky Horror Picture Show esque with the t- text, right? So this eighties mm-hmm. kind of low budget horror for me, right up my street. So I love stuff like that. Looking at the artwork, and and I'll, I'll say this as well: the trailer doesn't do it justice. The film's better than the trailer. You know what I mean? So well, that's always you'll... the hope. That's always yeah. the hope that the trailer just kind of gives you a, a kind of snippet of what you're going to be in for, but then when you actually see the film, it will surpass everything in the trailer. The worst thing that can happen is when all the best bits are in the trailer. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing that can happen to any movie, whether it's a low-budget one or a big Hollywood blockbuster. Because it's, <clears throat> it's it's the first thing people say if they come out a bad movie and they're like, oh, all the best bits are in the trailer. So maybe it's actually a good trailer in that respect. Yeah, well, aye, maybe if, if if that if the job was to be less than the film, then definitely because the the trailer there you just saw the ah, what's in the basket ah seemed quite hokey and it is, it is a little hokey. It is definitely <laughs> a little. <fun. laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun, so much fun. So the opening scene, the film begins with Dwayne Bradley checking into a sleazy hotel, Broslin in New York City, carrying a large wicker basket. Um, I don't know how much you looked into the film. Did you know that it was a big gooey looking face thing, Rams, before you put the film on? Aye, because like I said, I knew of it and I've seen clips of it before. Um, most of the clips that I'd ever seen came from when he was destroying the hotel room. Uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, so I knew I knew what it was going to look like. Aye, it, was, uh, oh, it wasn't a surprise anyway. Um, but... <laughs> I'll talk about it when, when it's time. It's fine. So, so there's obviously flashback through a series of flashbacks. We learn about Dwayne and Beli- Belial. How do you say his name? Belial. Belial. I'm pretty sure. I, n- I never actually looked into this properly, but I'm pretty sure that Belial is actually a demon's name. Wow. Um, now, let me just have a quick look to Belial is a term occurring in the. Yep. Belial is a term occurring in the Hebrew Bible and Old Testament, which later become person, uh, personified as the devil in Christian texts in the New Testament. But so no, it is actually a biblical demon name. What so, the hell? Bit, bit cruel naming the kid that, eh? I know. Uh, well, <laughs> you can tell through the flashbacks exactly what his dad thought about it. <laughs> um, but... uh, I, I, I mean, the keen, like, I mean, he had uh, a definite favourite. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, my favourite's the one that's mostly there. <laughs> <laughs> we learn about Dwayne and Belial's troubled past, including their separation by doctors against their will. Um, so our introduction to Belial is when Dwayne opens the basket to reveal Belial. Uh, his, he's deformed, hideous, and that's obviously his twin brother, which you don't find out to the to like further into the film, who, who communicates with Dwayne telepathically. Mm. So at first, at first, because there's a scene where Dwayne's in his bed and he's like, shut up, it's 3 a.m., I want to go to sleep. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, what Very is he well saying anything? <laughs> but thanks, it was an impression. <laughs> and um, so I, so for that part, like, you, you are actually a twin. Right, which is excellent for this episode. <laughs> so, oh, I've, I've got so much in common. <laughs> what ones? What? Who's the? Who's Belial? <laughs> who's Belial? Uh, probably me, to be honest. <laughs> For fuck's sake. So, they say twins have some sort of telepathy between them, right? And mm-hmm. I love that they play on that there in this this episode. So, tell us, J Mac, is there any type of telepathy that exists within twins? Uh, we've spoken about this before, um, actually on a relatively recent show, I think, and I can't remember who it was with. I think it was one when we had a guest on, and um, I think Heather, my, my twin sister, has experienced it more than I have. Um, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever really experienced it, but she has on my behalf. Um, like there was a night that my car had broken down really late at night or early in the morning. Mm-hmm. And she woke up at that time and knew that there was something wrong. Um, I think I'd broken down on the fourth road bridge, mm-hmm. um, which is just a really convenient place for anybody to break down. Um, but I, 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 good view of the sea. 
Aye, aye. Well, no, because it was fucking dark. <laughs> Uh, but I, 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 whether there's really something in it or not, I don't know. But there's been quite a lot of documented cases of some kind of not telepathy, but intuition between um, twins. Like, I wonder. I've, I've never had a text of my sister saying, "I can't believe you just thought I was a prick." <laughs> it's like, how do you know that? Twin. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's it's like anything else. There are a lot of coincidences in the world. Some of them just happen mm. to marry up at the right time. Well, the the relationship between Belial, <laughs> Belial and Dwayne doesn't seem to be that of like a, a fond relationship. For me, it kind of felt like like he was, Dwayne was a keeper of an issue that also held him captive. I... But I don't really see how the how the relationship could be anything but that. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they could go for a walk in the park. <laughs> it's, well, I don't uh, know. I reckon he could at least let him get his hole. I, actually, to be fair, if that was to happen, if that film came out nowadays, they would actually just try to make it like it was completely normal. <laughs> like he's he's walking down the walking down the street with him like in a wheelbarrow, just everybody saying good morning, hi Belial, how are you getting on the day, pal? He's like. Aah! And they're like, oh, nice to hear it, pal. Nice to hear it. Uh, but 1982 was a different time. It was a lot less accepting of uh, physical deformities. <laughs> I know, I know. There's there's a few times in there where you really felt the pain of Dwayne having to really deal with Belial. Janice, fantastic to have you here tonight. As always, Janice, looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about basket case if you've seen it matthewman says don't worry the wee nugget gets his nat king in the sequel oh what man <laughs> unbelievable which is mad kind that of, he, he kind of got it in this as well didn't he no he definitely got it yeah Most definitely got it but i didn't understand how that worked i'm not even going to try and if i do i'll draw you a picture and send it to you <laughs> we'll get to that part because we need to really break down that scene that's the only type of scene i was just like Wait a fucking minute! I'm not uh, sure that that particular scene was a bit of a bony contention. Um, apparently, a lot of the crew walked out when that film was getting seen. Uh, when that scene was getting filmed, sorry, when that film was getting seen. Um, uh, when that scene was getting filmed, a lot of people were just disgusted. Um, ah, well, well, I, I understand that, but there's, there's there's still more to that than like there's more to that scene that I need to break down than even just that. Um, because there is a romantic. In any 80s film, there's always a romantic type of link between two people. A romance, so to speak. Dwayne meets his receptionist named Sharon. Sharon! At the local doctor's office and begins to develop feelings for her. Which, by the way, I don't know if it's just the 80s, but happened very fast. Here, this is the typewriter. Oh, you're not here for the typewriter? Cool. What I go out later? <laughs> the thing is, she was so raging with him for the fact that he had visited New York and it hadn't been to certain places yet. And, and I mean, it, it was proper, like, she was proper raging. And it, she was like, you mean you've not had time to go to this place? You've not had time to go to that? Well, I'll fucking take you! <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I'm just going to stay in the night, pal. <laughs> and what I like about the 80s as well, the, the love interests are always just naturally glowing, right? They don't, you know what I mean? Uh, the, I mean, she she was actually quite she was pretty attractive to be honest. Um, but I wasn't surprised though to find out that she was wearing a wig for the entire film because she's actually bald. Is she actually <laughs> bald in real life? I mean, well, <laughs> I, I say I say she's bald. She certainly had a shaved head at the time, but uh, that's a, a wig, which I wasn't surprised to find out. I she definitely looked samurai copy in that. <laughs> Miss Fuji, Fuji, I'm Yamatama, Akiyoko. Learn in Japanese. <laughs> Omaha, Yamaha. <laughs> um, so I. What's katana mean? It means Japanese sword. <laughs> <laughs> Some real script research going in. Um, All right, for sure. But yeah. So I, then, so I didn't know she was bald. I wonder what that was all about. Hopefully, she was it was probably right. just a probably just a style thing. Maybe she was a bit punky. That was definitely rife back in the early 80s. It was fucking rife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, there's the, the love interest with Sharon, which 
was kind of Dwayne's way of going, you know, this is my chance to kind of live a normal life. But did we fucking Belisle? Was he into that? Nah, nah, mate. He's not into that. He's like, ah, creep out his basket. Oh, what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> yeah, what? Have you got five minutes to talk about your car's extended warranty? <laughs> you got five minutes to talk about the blob, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Saviour. <laughs> mate, that, when you're. No, mate, what do you mean you've no? <laughs> go back to the previous one. <laughs> it's like. When your takeaway is five minutes later than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> there is no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always say that. I always, I always wanted to open a takeaway place called It's Nearly There or It's On Its Way. Yeah, it's on its Hello, way. it's on its way. All right, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Class. I didn't quite understand the, like, it must have had some type of strength, this Izzy Wig looking thing, because. Uh, 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 and a serious a problem off. with that. <laughs> right. like, could it? Oh, I don't know what you're going to say. Go look for at it. The muscles. Look, look at the muscles. Look. <laughs> Just ripped. <laughs> Fucking Boglin. Do you Wait, remember Boglins? Rip. Yes. Yeah, they were awesome. <laughs> they were quite cool. Hey, he ripped a door clean off, right? With no legs. So no legs. Mm-hmm. Ripped a door clean off and can go up to you and just fresh hook you. And then mm-hmm. when it, when you get fish hooked, you die and blood spurts out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. So, no quite sure what's happening there. There's a wee cut along the face, but I don't see it being fatal. There were a few deaths I was like, right, that's fatal. But there was a few I was like, all you done was like slap him about a bit. How is he dead and like puking out blood? I think that's purely down to budget. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that, like, he's like, just grab their face, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Donna Pollock says, hey guys, how are you two this fine evening? We are much better that you are here, Donna. I've not heard oh. for you for a while, Donna. Where you been? Uh, you know Donna in real life? No. <laughs> All right, the way he said that, it's like he's our neighbours or something. No, no, never never, never met her in my puff. It'd be really Donna embarrassing. to the left be... of me. Shug is to the right here. <laughs> no, it'd be really funny if she was like, Jordan, we, we have met many times, and I'm like... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it was a glory hole. I'm joking. <laughs> Still joking. Uh, I was on the ring end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was a low budget, by the way. Basket case was made on a low budget, reportedly around 35k. Despite limited yeah. resources, the film used creative practical effects to bring Belial to life. And by the way, <laughs> I mean, you could tell it was like Terminator 1 kind of stop motion, <laughs> but. They don't. They they put the. the it it, it wasn't as good as it wasn't as good as Terminator One, um, ah, really. but the the budget I think it started at sixteen thousand dollars, and half of that I think came right out of the director's pocket. That was his life savings basically. Which I mean, eight thousand dollars in nineteen eighty two is a fair whack of cash. Ah. Um, not quite sure where the rest came from, but then they actually they acquired the rest of it while filming it and ah. showing potential investors what had been filmed already uh, um so there was quite a lot of time where there was no filming getting done because there was basically no money um but to be able to kind of bring a feature film together with that kind of money in that way is still impressive regardless of the the final product i mean we know how hard it is to make a film um <laughs> even a short one uh, and, uh, Donna says, i've been working guys i am a support worker Ah, oh, right. good on you. You'll have met folk. Um, aye, that's class. Be careful. That's class. That's class. So this episode's for you. <laughs> um, oh, mate, you're lucky that wasn't the other way around. Or I'm lucky that wasn't the other way around. You'd have thrown me right under the fucking bus <laughs> there, like. Uh, Jimmy Mac used to be a support worker as well. Then went back to his other job. Um, oh, so was the, shift, the shifts were fucking dreadful, man. <laughs> And that was the start and finish time. <laughs> <laughs> now the 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 worst the worst one ever. I was I was night shift from a Sunday night into a Monday night, twelve hour shift, and then they put me in for a day shift on the Tuesday, twelve hours. So I got home on the Monday morning. It's uh, eight in the morning, and then eight eight in the morning the next day was my next shift. That was that was when I decided to go back to my my previous job, which I'm still at because it's class. Smashing. Uh, Donna says, I support the elderly in their uh, their own homes. 
Oh, that's class. Good on you. We need. We need It'd be weird if you like... supported them in other folks' homes. Uh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> it's like so. I'll look after you, but I'll meet you at Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dwayne and uh, Bill, I'll track down one of the doctors, Doctor Lifflander. That's uh, the last. It looks like Sigourney Weaver, right? Yeah, she does have a look at that and confront him in his own home. His name wasn't Lifflander, was it? His name no. was Needle. Needle, needle. It wasn't a needle Meyer. Terrible at remembering these names. Um, was it needle Meyer. Needle something, wasn't it? What was the guy's name? Doctor. Because I was like, oh, how? I know, I Lifflander. But I thought there was needle in his name. Ah, there's definitely a needle in somebody's name. <laughs> um, bloody hell, man! Are you got indigestion or something? I can hear uh, it. Remember I sent you a wee video a while ago? A, a wee ah. while ago? <laughs> There's so, something something is uh, something is brewing in the old gut like. Um, <laughs> Dr. Harold Needleman. Need but Harold you know what? Need I was there. correct though. I was correct. The guy that first gets done in. I've got a wee picture I'm getting done in right here. This here. That's Lifflander. <laughs> right? Ah, that's right, him okay. that's right out of order. He was right out of order because he'd done the, the surgery to remove wee Dilat. What's his name again? Delisle. 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 My, 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 Belisle. That's totally him. Belisle by Tom Naybones. <laughs> by Tom Naybones. Uh, so he tracks them down. So they're proper raging that that these uh, that they got separated. I don't know why. He should have thanked them. Both of them are alive. But it was probably because he got chucked in a carrier bag and left it with the bin, right? <laughs> I, I think that's probably the biggest problem he had with the situation. I don't think the separation was that. You know, if they if they they, they could have got used to that, but there's the fact they got left left for a console pickup. They were like, nah, fuck. That. <laughs> it's like you're mate, you're fucking right. Three uplifts per year, Belial. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tumor. <laughs> yes, he's like a tumor, isn't he? That's what he is. Aye, he's he's very tumorish. Aye, but he's a mute. <laughs> he's a mute that can telepathically speak to his brother and also murder folk, heavy murder folk. Like it's not even mm -hmm. just there's a bit where he proper rips his few folk to bits, which is a wee bit out of order. Um but they have like wee heart to hearts and all that just sitting in the lav. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like something you fucking leave in the toilet, J Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's an interesting place for a conversation with your formerly conjoined brother. <laughs> so, I, I can't just sit him on the bed next to me. Nah, no, nah. No. He's gone in the bog. And also, <laughs> I, I mean, I think there's probably a practical reason for that. They could probably hide a hand under there quite easily. <laughs> um, <laughs> they never had the budget to fucking put a hole in a mattress. <laughs> uh, well, hey, there's ways in which there's ways in which he gets about, so to speak. So Dwayne's growing affection for Sharon causes tension between him and Belial leading to a tragic betrayal and a violent climax. Hold that word, climax. Here. Yeah. So, Belial's proper raging that his brother has decided to go out for a date, right? He even gets him a wee telly, which comes in a box that that devil didn't come in. That box for that TV. I remember looking at it going, that never came in that box, mate. <laughs> that never you never bought it with that box. So it's obviously he's picked up off the street somewhere. Puts the well, TV on. Eh? They, they actually went dumpster diving for a lot of the stuff for set dressing in this film. Aye. Uh, literally, they, like, there was obviously very little money, so they, they were literally jumping into dumpsters and picking out old furniture and probably the, the famous TV. Um, that I I said they, they were literally up to their knees in shite, just <laughs> trying up to, to, my knees trying to get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're very helpful. <laughs> Nosy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe explain what that reference is for anybody that might not know. It's a it's a show. I don't remember what the show's called, but it's about a dude that starts screaming at where's Tourette's 
and he's funny as hell. He's Scottish. Mm-hmm. That's what that was. Right when he's walk when he's walking through the the shot the supermarket with his mum or whoever, and then he just goes like that, poof, smacks her right in the pus. She's like, <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, did I get you there? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> now. Okay, now. All right, so dumpster diving, you say? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, dumpster diving going on. Got to do what you got to do to make it work. So he gets proper raging at his brother because his brother's away. Uh, Matthewman says, Johnny Davidson, Tourette's legend. <laughs> uh, and Donna says, after doing retail for 20 years here, 20 years. <laughs> I ago. did retail for, for what, nine years, I think? Uh, I think I was about nine, nine, ten, from what, 2007 to like 2014, maybe 15. I don't know. I don't know. Something about that. I think so. Um, retail is a pish place to be. So <laughs> mate, I feel you. Mate, mate. Tell, tell the trifle story again. Oh, man, I can't. I can't go on, go on, it's, it's phenomenal. Go, go, go. Well, a woman, I was in Cathy, and um, <laughs> a woman and a man came towards where I was just kind of wrapping up, and at the end of the night, we leave it. We left it cakes and stuff that were to be consumed that day at a lower price because that was um, there to go for cheap, all right? And uh, a woman comes in with a guy and she's like, hi, I'll just have this trifle and this. And I'm like, oh, you all right? You look happy. Like, wow, we've just come from, um, we've just come from the hospital. Our daughter's just died and caught in the headlights. I was like, well, at least you've got a trifle to look forward to. <laughs> I think that may have been a trifle insensitive. <laughs> It was. I was damn right trifling there. Um, <laughs> so, Dwayne goes out for a date with his missus, right? And at this point, it's out of order because Belial's at home smashing stuff up, going, because he knows his brother's away for a date, right? Which is out of order. I think that's a rotten thing to do as a brother, to try and hold your brother back for getting some. There's a point where Dwayne's on the bed with Sharon. And he puts his hands on her boobs and she's like, take us, Dwayne, take us right now. And he's like, I can't. <laughs> and he runs away home like an absolute little bitch, right? And I was like, ah, that's us. That, I had a flush to prick in the toilet for that. I had a flush <laughs> under the toilet, right? I think, out of order, right? So then he goes to sleep, right? And then randomly, you're seeing... Dwayne running through the streets with his willy out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what's the significance, right? He runs into Sharon's house, who's randomly sleeping naked, right? Because that's what women do, right? And um, his hand starts caressing her naked boob. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he did come out and get some, but then I thought, no, maybe his brother's possessed him and they've switched bodies here or something because he done a big, ah. Before it, I thought, is that what's happening? Next minute, you realise Dwayne's actually still in his bed <laughs> and Belial's plowing his messes. <laughs> like, how? How? I know, I mean, bearing in mind that, like, you can see when they get separated that Belial is essentially a head and, like, the top of a chest, maybe. You know, I mean, I, I don't think there's what's any, there's, there's no ding-dong going on there. What's he up to? But does, does he even feel like that? Like, does he even feel sexually aroused? Uh, I can't speak for Belial, mate. Never met him. Uh, really? You, you look alike. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> My wife will be upstairs. And, what the fuck is he doing there? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Why should I fuck up Belial? <laughs> Just on that note, by the way, I find that, that see the noises that he made. That he uh -huh. makes, that he makes, I find them really unsettling. I don't know why. Because uh, like, quite... if I heard that noise during the night, I would probably die of some kind of medical episode. You'd probably get that... mummed off by Lyle. I mean, <laughs> I think the the guy that plays um, Dwayne, mm -hmm. uh, he does the 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 kind of voice effects for Belial as well. Oh, that's and cool. obviously, it gets tinkered with a little bit to make it sound a bit kind of demonic, but. It's fucking horrible noise. 
It really yeah. is a horrible noise. I think it was quite effective. And, it's, and it was probably done for like 30 pence. Do you know what I mean? Like, listen, we didn't have money to spend on like real demon noises. So go and just shout into this microphone and we'll see what we can do with it. <laughs> um, but it actually works. Well, for me, it worked. Um, I never found it funny. Like this is kind of classed as a comedy horror. Um, but I, I don't think I laughed, actually. I laughed when the film. killing was happening. When the killing was happening, I laughed. No, I don't think I laughed when I, like because I was supposed to laugh. I think I laughed at things that were unintentionally funny, like some some cheap effects or whatever. <laughs> um, but I don't think I actually laughed when anything was meant to be funny. Um, they actually released a, a cut of this film um, that had all the gore removed so that it would appeal more to the comedy audience. But then they were like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Let's put the fucking nasty stuff back in. Um, well, here's something for you. Is Sharon dead? I think she is. I think that's. I think that's so why. Still moving, even after Belial walked away. <laughs> well, budget. <laughs> budget. She she moved. They're like, we've named our film left. You dick. I didn't use this shot, and you're fucking scratching your bum. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe did. <laughs> so it's only been, you've got an itch. You've got an itch. <laughs> Especially when you've just had a ball aisle up you. It's like having a good hooker, man. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> what, man, there was nothing left it after the ball aisle got there. Oh, God. <laughs> Basket case four, the minge destroyer. <laughs> the minge destroyer. <laughs> yeah, actually, minge must be one of the most horrible words for that. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's pretty words for it. Like... Like foo foo and flower, I'm like minch. Oh, man. <laughs> oh man, I've just remembered. My mum will be raging that I mentioned this on here. <laughs> uh, but I remember once we were st I was st still living at home at the time, so it was quite a long time ago. And uh, <laughs> my sister, I, I'm sure it was Heather. Heather had said something a bit crappy. And <laughs> my mum <laughs> said, Oh, Heather, <laughs> shut up, you minch. <laughs> <laughs> She had no idea what it meant. Yeah, man. So whatever argument was happening at the time got completely forgotten about everybody was howling. The fact that my mum, who never swears, said the word minge and used it towards her daughter. Hell, you're a minge. You're funny. Fanny's a, Fanny's a nice word, though. Fanny's a nice word, but minge. Minge makes it sound like something that's in fact. Basket case five, Fanny's fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> Episode nine, Revenge of the Minge. <laughs> God. Oh, let's get it's it out of hand. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the film reaches its climax as Dwayne and Belial face off in a final showdown, resulting in a shocking and bloody conclusion. By the way, like, see, just, just humour me here, J-Mac, right? But in any film... When something happens and s a, a, an onlooker comes up, witnesses what's just happened, looks over and goes, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Um, I, wish I, I wish I could tell you. I really do. But I, it's just bad acting. <laughs> it's, no, it's bad, bad. But does that not typically mean they're dead? They didn't make it. Oh, right, sorry. I thought you just meant, like, like extras that don't know what to do. <laughs> no, so, no, no. It's, it's like, uh, right. if something happens, two people fight with a sword, they both get stabbed, they both fall down. Any, any, anything that happens, quite catastrophe, like, catastrophic. Aye. Right? If someone comes along, observes it, and goes, that Aye. means they're dead, they're, right? They're, they're not alive, maybe? Right. Signs of well, life that, are gone. Well, that happens at the end of this. Uh -huh. Basket case two. <laughs> we have, well, I uh, have recently subscribed to Shudder, so and I, I have access to Basket Case one, two, and three. Um, so I'm, I think after this one, I'm going to delve into the other two as well and just uh -huh. see how because uh -huh. I think much like the Nightmare on Elm Street series, they get more and more silly as they go on. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how silly it can actually get. Well, I thought they were fucking dead. That's what it seems like, but 
I don't know if something's successful enough, then there's always going to be a sequel, isn't there? It seems like Dwayne was hung and then fell to his death. Mm -hmm. Then it oh! seemed like seemed like oh. Belial pretty much kicked the bucket. <laughs> no. <laughs> But he does. He now. is. He is super strong. We've established <laughs> that. So maybe the fall didn't kill him. You know what I mean? Um, but, speaking of his strength, by the way, going back to that earlier on, how the fuck could he not just get out of the basket? <laughs> no, he's in a what. he's in a wicker basket. It's not a safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's in a wicker basket with like a fucking JML padlock on it. Uh, um, I don't. He's not not escaping for that. No, I don't think he was bound to it. I think that was just to keep the lid shut for stopping other people going in. It was for him to hide in. He knew he knows folk don't look like him. Well, most folk. <laughs> don't know. I've been to Ibrox. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying though. Like most people don't look like him. So that's probably why he, he knew himself he needs to remain in the basket for his own safety. But he's a proper wee murderer, right? Mm, I a a sweet prick. Oh, apparently there was meant to be a shot in the film. I think it was at the beginning when he kills um, the first doctor, whatever his fucking name is. Everybody's got weird names in this. I know. And uh, apparently there was supposed to be a shot of him bursting out the window. Like, bursting, like, exploding through the window. I might be wrong about what scene it was meant to be. Anyway, it was supposed to explode through the window. But every time they threw the puppet at the window, it just bounced off. Doom! <laughs> 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 and and they wouldn't have had the budget to make breakaway glass, so they were literally just trying to fucking launch this thing through a window, and it just kept going boom, <laughs> popping back out again. <laughs> I mean, look, look at that! Look at that! Aye, it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> so <quite laughs> horrible, man. It's quite uh, a. Uh, by the way, by the way, that guy in that in that picture is supposed to be twelve. Aye, okay. 12-year-old looks 40. Um, <laughs> basket case, like, insinuates that it's always in a basket. I don't know. If you could rename this film to be called anything else, what would it be? Uh, oh. Separation. Separation? I. You like uh, it, don't you? you like separation. It. Aye, I think that works. Separation. Separation. I would call it fucking wee bastard blob for <laughs> outer space. Let's go with separation, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> wee bastard blob. <laughs> Not from outer space. <laughs> Not from outer space. Oh, man, that's a great title. Wee bastard blob. Not from outer space. <laughs> uh, no, yours works better. Yours works better. I think it would attract the right type of audience. <laughs> wee bastard blob. Mice has got a bit of thought behind it. Like, wee bastard blob. In no outer space. Okay. Right. Wrong, I feel a mafia man coming on. <laughs> wee bastard blob from not outer space. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm, uh, I'm quite interested to see the second one. This is such a beautiful. Uh, I keep going back to it because it's something that I'm right into as physical media. This, Harry, come on! You want to get yourself? You want to get yourself the physical? Look at it. Just looks great. Slip off cover. Alternative case there. You've even got him walking down the street with a basket. Just beautiful. Love, 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 love it. So you can purchase this as of the 24th of April. Pardon me, sorry. 29th. <laughs> you reminded me of Matt Berry there. 24th of April. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't even know who that is. New York um, City. <laughs> uh, it's actually the 29th of April. I got, I got it wrong. Sorry. 2024. 29th of April. You can go ahead and order it. Uh, it'll be on Amazon. It'll also be on on demand as well as a 29th April. So you can get that on the Arrow Player. Make sure to subscribe for that. You can get a free trial. So just go ahead and www.arrow.com. Go straight to it. Get yourself a wee free trial. Explore everything that Arrow has to offer. We also have been covering these bad boys. Here's some just to name a few on our Arrow short film special. I should have called it Arrow short film special too, right? Because this is the second time we've done a good wave of these shorts. Mm. However, yeah. however, 
However, I don't know why I keep naming it because we'll get up to like 40. You know what I mean? But keep them coming. So we've just we've covered terrible things the other week. Yeah, the other day. Sorry. We uh, tomorrow we are live with. Um, oh, sorry. Can I, can I just say I was gutted that I couldn't be there for the the terrible things one because that that's no, that that was phenomenal. It really uh, was. It was. Um, I mean to do no green did, screen to do what he did with that um, on the budget that he had. I mean that the effects that come into play um, at the end are just. It genuinely made me feel like I was there, and that it, it made me feel uncomfortable. It was really well done. So he was very flattered. Well done again. That was to... Ke- Kieran. That was Kieran Hickey. Is that right? Kieran Hickey. That's right. Aye. Ah, good um, man. Good job. Yeah, he was very flattered that you enjoyed his film. Um. So yep, terrible things, which is phenomenal. Go and check that episode out. We done it a couple of days ago, but also go check that out on the Arrow Player. We have the Meet Friend uh, interview tomorrow with Izzy mm-hmm. Lee. We had Bark just the other day. That was yesterday or day before? Day before yesterday. And that was excellent as well. That was fun. Um, Keith, we've yet to set up an interview, but the Anatomy Maestro, um, that interview will be Tuesday. So many interviews coming up that I'm not going to write it down now. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) But yeah, definitely go and get the Arrow player. Get on these. Watch them. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. And watch basket case because basket case is class or no class J-Mac, good case class good case J-Mac, did you enjoy it? <laughs> did you enjoy your view in a basket case i i did enjoy it i mean it, it was the, it's the type of film that would absolutely terrify me if i seen it when i was too young um i don't know i mean i, I feel like there's i feel like kids are a wee bit more desensitized to stuff now but if i'd seen that when i was young that would have properly freaked me out like i said that sound effect the screaming it's but still, I can still hear it a wee bit. Quite nasty. Uh, the stop motion just makes it hilarious. The the premise is mad. The film was bonkers, man. But it's 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 good fun. It's good nah. fun. Nah, nah, it wouldn't have done nothing to me. <laughs> ah, you're you're built different, though, man. There's something there's something inherently broken in your soul. I'm a hundred percent convinced of that at this point. <laughs> Me, I couldn't watch Taggart because it was too scary. Well, do you know what used to get get send the shit right up to me was the Midsummer Mur- Murders theme. Hi, it's a bit of a miss selling theme tune, though, isn't it? Right. I will. Uh, so you've got this, this weird scary, these, these, this horror theme, and then all of a sudden it's like, "Do you want a cup of tea?" It's like, <laughs> Somebody's died again in Midsummer. It's like the population of that place must be like ninety. There's somebody dying every fucking week <laughs> at the hands of somebody that never lived there before. <laughs> what a lot of shite that program is, man! Anybody that watches that, just, just get a grip, get a grip. It's, it's a it's a it's a murdery version of a soap opera. What a pile of pish! But it the really thing is, is though, did it not have a scary shit intro? Eh? It did have. A, it, I mean, it's <laughs> eerie as hell, mate. I mean, there's terrible programs with good theme tunes. I used to hear. Oh well, I used to hear that and be like, oh no, Matthew Man, Second one is mental. Trauma got involved and it shows. <laughs> oh, trauma. Oh, trauma trauma films, man. These <laughs> these guys make some absolute <laughs> trash. Oh, love it. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> can he wait? Can he wait? Um, Janice says, Kev has a soul. <laughs> Kevin has a soul. I had one somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it to the devil for this 3,000 subscriber podcast. <laughs> I know, I thought my soul was worth a wee bit more, but we haggled. We haggled. That's, the what you get for selling, that's what you get for selling it in the bath game market, you plump. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that guy with the one eye and the hockey teeth were not. Mate, how, how, how funny would that be, actually, to set up a stall at a market and it just says, my soul, open to offers, to see if anybody would actually buy it. Or, or you set up a stall that buys souls and people come and try and sell to the market vendor. That's a short I- film. Copyrighted here. Happened right here. Aye, it was my idea as well. Time stamped. Well, I don't know. I elaborated, made it better. So <laughs> definitely it's wasn't a, my idea. It's a, it's a double one. <laughs> <laughs> was it? All right. Oh no, it didn't work. No, that's All a right. Pass, isn't it? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what am I like? What am I like? I uh, so I'm glad. I'm glad we got this. This is a a banger of a film. 
Anybody that's not checked it out, go check out limited edition, limited edition Blu-ray available as of the 29th of this month. And that is not an April Fool's. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an April Fool's, no. I, I love you... watching films like this. Well, that's what we're here for now, isn't it? Like, I think <clears throat> our podcast has is, is evolved over time. And we're now at the point where we would just like to watch interesting, independent, sometimes mental shit. Hmm. Um, and that's what we do. And we love it. And we thank yeah. everybody watching for loving it as well. Uh, and tuning in and doing all that cool stuff is defo class, man. We heavy appreciate it. Yeah, heavy, oh, heavy appreciate it. We heavy, man. heavy, heavy appreciate it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you um, look like Belial there. What? Ah! Ah! <laughs> um. Tomorrow. Oh, sorry. Before we go, can we just talk about the the death of the father? <laughs> what was that? The what saw. Was that? <laughs> what was that? A saw. The, the saw death. What the I mean, hell? <laughs> it's ah! clearly the saw is clearly moving at about fucking four RPMs, right? It's no, <laughs> it's no actually getting through it. You could stop it by putting your willy in it, and then it goes. <laughs> It's in the trailer, actually. You just see the camera kind of zoom in on the guy's belly. Um, but then what you get is these two rubber legs covered in blood just falling apart like that. <laughs> <laughs> Stockings with paper mache. And he says, classiest podcast there is. <laughs> Kiss <Jenny's>. my ring. <laughs> Wee legend. legend, man. Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. <laughs> uh, aye. It's, it's full of fun. I actually heavy enjoyed it. I was laughing. Sometimes it can be a slog sitting through something, sometimes. But this was definitely not one of those. Meet Friend is up tomorrow. Tomorrow. Holy shit. We've got Izzy Lee tomorrow for Meet Meet Mate. <laughs> meet Mate. <laughs> meet Mate. Aye. And then Drew Maxwell will be on on Tuesday night for Maestro. That's um, Anatomy Maestro. Have you watched Maestro. Anatomy Maestro? Maestro. Maestro. Maestro, Maestro, I'm calling it Maestro. I've still, I've still to watch Anatomy Maestro. I've seen everything else. I've still to watch Anatomy Maestro. <laughs> Proper cross, Kirsty to us both. <laughs> Kirsty, Kirsty, fuck's sake. Kirsty. He's like, who the fuck is Kirsty? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fine. Kirsty to us both. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny way to spell Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's Ginny's it's Ginny Scottish <laughs> Kirsty. <laughs> Sorry, Ginny's that's oh, my inability. Man. Yeah, normally I read and 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 pronounce perfectly. Do you know what it is? But it's because I get to this time of the night, all my energy's out, man. I'm out of health. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm on no lives left. I've lost all my lives. I'm on no health. And that's why that's why I struggle a wee bit when I get to this time. But Drew Maxwell, <laughs> Tuesday, eh? Every episode's when you press start on continue. <laughs> Your Control three lives are already humped. <laughs> Control or delete CPUs at 100. In fact, <laughs> CPUs at 100. Um, Janice says, all good. Ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> so, Drew Maxwell on Tuesday. And that's where we watch Anatomy. Maestro. Um, well, we talk about him. We talk about it with him and his process of making it. So meet friend on Monday, Anatomy Maestro on Tuesday. Be with us, 9 p.m. Join us, please. Join us. Bef we have just before we go, mm -hmm. can I ask you a question? I got a, I got a text of an old oh. friend of mine earlier on, uh -huh. and he said, you're the movie buff. Can you tell me what movie this trailer that I've got in my mind is from and he said it's either from the VHS of Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters 2 and it involves a foggy field and these knights coming back for the dead and just saying the words join us I spent half an hour googling everything possible to try and work out what this film would be and I couldn't do it join us knights in a foggy field yeah Hmm. Honest mate, don't waste your time now googling it because trust me, I tried every possible way of googling that, and and I just it just dropped, just drew a complete blank.
Are they definitely were knights. Yeah. Hmm. Said it was some kind of fantasy film, but I have zero idea what it might be. So we'll throw it out there to the community. If anybody knows what that trailer was for, then let us know. And I'll pass it on to pass it on the old Stuart. Ah, I'll look in. I'll look into that. Nice, because if it was around Ghostbusters time, what we're talking eighty? Well, it was either eighty four or nineteen ninety ish. Eighty four. Right, so early days. I'll definitely look into that. So it would have been something that at least that had a theatrical release then, because you're not get indies no one. I mean, they're not doing indie f- films as a what, trailer. What? Probably not back then. No. Join us. How were they saying it? Like join us. <laughs> Don't know. Don't know. I asked him if they were like zombies, and he was like, "No, they're just more skeletal." Um. Mm. So. I don't know. I, 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 I hated to admit it to him. I was like, mate, I, I fucking hate telling you this, but I have no idea. Join us. Join us. Well, the best thing to do is get the VHS of Ghostbusters, eh? Do you know what really pissed me off? Like, when I typed in join us, like, for a movie quote, kept coming up with the Lost Boys, and I'm like, no, that's B1 of us. So, what, what's Google doing? What are you playing it over there in your Silicon Valley fucking woke pishes? Oh. Eh? What are you doing? Ah, silly Ridiculous. boys. Ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. It's been an absolute blast. Basket case, for me, got a 6 out of 10, which is great, by the way. That is not a feat on it. Like, it's actually, that's great. No, I think the IMDB score of 6.2 is pretty much spot on. Aye, aye, because it was fun. And it's something that holds up for what what it was. The stop motion was class, by the way, for what it was and its day, how little they had to use. I mean, well, know. the director did it all himself. And apparently really? at one point, he lost the tatty way, how shit it was looking, literally threw the film onto the floor, left it there for two months as a reminder of how shit a filmmaker he is, and then decided at the last minute, ah, fuck it, I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> no, good on him, good on him. Great. Absolutely great. Um, so I see you guys tomorrow night and then Tuesday night and probably through the week, I know, as these Arrow short films continue. Big up, My Arrow. wife's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife will see me all fucking day, mate. She's sitting to the living room uh, wait, uh, awaiting my arrival. So <laughs> on that note, lads, thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you through the week and through the week. Why did you not tell me my fucking hat was squint? Sake man, sitting there like, you look like Ernest. You look like Ernest. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> God, class man. Thanks again, guys, and we shall see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you then. Mwah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> As a false finish. <laughs>